Hello everybody, my name is Will, and welcome back to Sprocket! Today, I'm going to be building a tank to the specifications of the contest that's currently going on in my Discord, which you can uh, get to in the description below. And we will be not actually entering this tank in the contest, so you don't have to worry about it uh, being competition for yourself if you do join in. Uh, however, we will be trying to follow the rules as closely as possible, but we, we might not follow them 100% just for uh, video's sake, because, you know, I'm... Since I'm not entering, I may as well. <laughs> but yeah, without any further ado, we'll get building. Why not? So hello, it's me again, post-commentary Will. And yes, uh, so I, I just said I don't know if it's going to fit within the regulations. And with hindsight, having now built the tank, and now I'm talking over it, uh, I can confirm to you, I, as to the best of my knowledge, it fits within the regulations. So this is a legal tank. Now, what I didn't want to do is I didn't want to just put the biggest tank gun possible on this thing within the regulations and end up with like a 255 millimeter gun or something ridiculous like that because a that's the point of the contest and i'll explain what that what i mean by that in a second and b i wanted to build something a little bit more realistic than that so a on that point uh one thing i didn't want to do essentially i didn't want to just upload the best tank that you could possibly do in this competition and absolutely min max it because even though i'm not submitting this tank the fact that i've uploaded this means that it can be done and you can see that it can be done so if i was to then put like the biggest gun ever on this thing you would be like oh well there's no point uploading my entry because it's only got a 155 millimeter gun on it or something so I'm not doing that, so the gun that I'm putting on this is a 120mm gun. Now, by no means let that make you think either that that is a big gun for this contest. You can go way bigger than that, so feel free to go absolutely hog wild with your design. I just chose not to. Anyway, disclaimer out the way. <laughs> Okay, so uh, this is actually something I see a lot in the comment section, and uh, I thought this was a little bit more common knowledge, but apparently it isn't. So <laughs> uh, if you didn't know, you can hold Alt, uh, and when you move a handle, like on here, or you can even do this with the scale handles, you can see it'll make a duplicate of the part that you're working on. So there you go. That is how you can do that. Uh, <laughs> I've seen quite a few people uh, wondering how that's done. And uh, since we're here already and we're already having a little bit of a chat, why don't we talk about the design we've gone for? So I've loosely been trying to go off the Panzer II-ish. Uh, I don't want to copy the Panzer II exactly. So as you can see, instead of having like a slanted bit of armor here, that's kind of more like how the Panzer II is arranged. Uh, we're just going to have this flat cut here. Uh, so obviously this is going to be where the driver is, and on this side we probably won't have a crew member back here. This will probably just be some machinery spaces or something. Uh, realistically, maybe we should even angle it like that, but that feels a little bit too Soviet. That feels a little bit more German somehow. I don't know. This wants to be German. <laughs> it's the general goal, so uh, it needs to be somewhat boxy. And then generally... Uh, I'm just going to slap a big old open top turret on the top of this thing, uh, and we're probably going to aim to have about a 105mm howitzer on top of this. We can probably go bigger, um, but for the sake of this, I feel like it's most realistic to have a 105-ish kind of millimeter gun, so that's what I'm going for, and... Uh yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just get right back to it. So, something that I've always done in Sprocket, and something that a lot of people have commented on, and uh, I'm sure a lot of you have realized as well, is um, a lot of the time when I build a tank, it ends up being a little bit too small. So, with this one, I kind of wanted to, I wanted to turn that around. I wanted to turn over a new leaf and start doing things a little bit larger. And what I've ended up doing is... <laughs> <laughs> making this one maybe a little bit too large. I wanted like a light tank hull. It's ended up more like a medium tank hull with light tank armor, which is fine because in theory this is a ground up SPG. So it doesn't need to be particularly well armored, but one thing it does need to be is fairly big because you need a lot of room to move around, a lot of space to just get the shells lugged around because it, it's far and 120 millimeter shells inside something that realistically shouldn't have 120 millimeter shells fitting in there. It's no Abrams, you know? <laughs> so it, it is still fairly small. Um, however, bigger than the crew necessarily would need, I'm going to say. Uh, we end up with four crew in this thing, if you're wondering. And um, 
yeah, the, uh, the, the driver's compartment there is a good couple of, I'd say 10, 20 centimeters either side of his shoulder. Could be a little bit more cramped in than that, but let's just say that it's all there for crew comfort or something. I don't know. Do you get crew comforts when you're an artillery crew? <laughs> <laughs> in, you know, Germany in the no-no period? Probably not. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, what am I even on about anymore? Yes, let's let's talk about the tank. Why not? Uh, because that's, that's always a good topic when I'm making a video about a tank. What am I doing? Uh, great question. Honestly, I don't know half the time. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm putting on a driver's port uh, on this little bit here because... I just wanted one, you know? Uh, it, it's something that takes a little bit more fidelity than uh, just kind of slapping it together. And another thing that you may have caught me doing, which it is kind of easier in this new update, is you see where the fenders go over and start floating on the front of the tank. I've actually brought some edges and faces up to meet the uh, fender, which just kind of gives it a little bit of depth and more 3D-ness rather than before. You'd have to do this with the uh, applique panels and they just didn't look great. The uh, textures on those, they always went a little bit weird. Now, you, you can still get those, um, but as I say, they do look a little bit weird. We do end up using them on this tank, actually. You might have seen that in the uh, thumbnail, but around the gun, we've got this rail that the gun can elevate and depress around and that has the riveted plates put around it which is the first time i've used them in this update there you go there's a fun little factoid um i gotta say though i i, I know i've said this in the last couple videos as well but uh the the actual building tools just moving things around in a uh, free place you know just feels a lot better now the edge selection works, which is super handy. Um, if you delete a face, it'll automatically select all of the points that made up that face, so you can then fill it in much easier again. So one thing that I was doing was selecting three or four faces in a place uh, and getting rid of them to make one plate that connects just the four edge corners, but because those other points are just along the line, they don't need to attach to that plate. It just reduces the number of edges and plates I have on the tank down to a more manageable number. It'll help with frame rate and negligible, negligible amount. Gosh, that's a hard word to say. Um, but <laughs> it will also just help my sanity while I'm building it, to be entirely honest. Um, other things that were particularly nice when building this tank. Uh, it turns out that uh, when you get triangles that form so occasionally when you're merging parts together you'll end up getting a plate that had four edges turning into a plate that has three edges a triangle it's super easy now to turn those triangles into a square and previously this would sometimes just throw a fit and go wrong and it's been so much more reliable for me so even though this is an alpha i'm genuinely <laughs> i'm finding less bugs than i did in the old one to be entirely honest though please bring me my combat back i want to shoot things so badly uh, also see i don't listen okay so hull sit rep uh, i think we are almost getting there i need to just kind of check that this will actually fit a person in here but yeah as you can tell it's I think it's looking pretty good. If you don't like asymmetrical tanks, I'm, I'm sorry. It is as <laughs> it is asymmetrical, but I think it looks pretty neat. So I'm happy to put a turret on this thing pretty soon. I'm just gonna do a little bit of tweaking. Okay, turret time. I'm going to slap on the default turret because apparently I've been stupid this whole time and yeah, the turret makes its own hole in the hull. So I've been working with the hole tool this whole time for no reason. <laughs> ah, oh well. <laughs> yeah, that was a little bit embarrassing. Except it wasn't, you'll see in a minute. Um, <laughs> what I mean by that. Uh, don't worry about it. But yes, turret time. Uh, so, the turret on this thing. I kind of wanted to just steal it straight off the uh, tank that this was kind of based off. Which is the grasshopper. The uh, house Shrek thing uh god <laughs> i should never try and speak german what a terrible time that was for any german person watching but yeah it's basically just a big open top turret um with a with a big old gun on the front of it so uh yeah unlike the uh 
Grasshopper. We'll just go with Grasshopper. We'll go, <laughs> we'll go with the English name. I can pronounce that one. Um, this has this kind of gap in the middle, and then the gun sits on a pivoting mount inside the gap, as opposed to having a proper mantlet sticking through the front plate. I just thought it would be a little bit more realistic. It feels like it should be cheaper. I'm not an engineer by any stretch of the imagination, or at least not a tank engineer. Um, so, yeah. I don't know how that would realistically work, uh, whether that would be cheaper. Probably. I don't know. Uh, and one thing that I did with this, actually, is I made it, I made it look cast. And I haven't done cast in a little while, uh, in terms of cast armor, that is. And I, it's... I feel like it's looking better than it did in the old version. I, it might just be the fact that where you've got edges, you've got the thickness of the armor showing. Or it might be because I believe there's a bit of a rounding to every single, um, like, edge, even if you don't apply smoothing. Uh, and I think that just kind of softens up the lines a little bit. And it, it, it looks good. I, I, do, I do really like the look of this, actually. Okay, we've got a basic template for our turret on now, and for some reason the hole in the hull has disappeared. That's fine, we'll deal with that later. Um, <laughs> but as you can see, it's going to be this kind of big open top thing with a big curved uh, opening, and we're going to slap a big old howitzer in the center here on a custom mantlet. So uh, there's the plan, and I guess there's nothing really else to explain about that. <laughs> I'm just going to do it. <laughs> And now you get the joy of basically an entire time lapse dedicated to just a custom mantler. And uh, I gotta say, is it just me or are custom mantlets actually easier in this new version? We were all worried that they wouldn't be possible at all. I was a little bit worried that they wouldn't be possible at all, to be entirely honest. And yet, um, I I've gone to do them and they... You, you can actually put the turret on in the normal orientation, which means mirror mode just works. Now, I don't know if mirror mode would work with turrets on their side now, but I don't need to risk mirror mode not working with the turret on their side, because it just it just lets you put it on like a normal turret. Uh, <laughs> which is to say, you know, the right way up. Uh, if you don't know how turrets work before, that's not going to make any sense to you. <laughs> Also, uh, my short, I have, a, I have a YouTube short with over a million views. I don't know why, uh, it's not a very good short, but it's a, it's a tutorial on how to make uh, oscillating turrets in Sprocket. And that is essentially a custom mantler tutorial as well for the old versions of the game. And now that is completely redundant. So, <laughs> so my, uh, my massive tutorial with over a million views is now completely and utterly pointless. So there you go. <laughs> There's a little bit of an update for you on that. And here, you can see, look, my turret hole's gone. Mm. After all that, with not having to use the hole tool and being really embarrassed that I'd been using it this whole time, uh, the hole disappeared again, so I had to do it myself anyway. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, I guess I did need to use the hole tool. <laughs> okay, and we've got our turret pretty much done, I believe. This might do with being a little bit longer. Maybe if we pop this up to 950, that's a little bit more proportional, but uh, the proportions are always going to be off. This thing is, um, yeah, a little bit uh, weird. So what I've basically done is I've stolen the turret off a... I, I, forgive me Germans for this, but I'm about to try and pronounce one of your tank names. The Hausschrecker Haus uh, Zane. Zane is 10, I think, uh, the, the grasshopper, and that is basically what has failed. Uh, the reason that we're designing this, that's failed, we're building a replacement. So I'm putting it on a slightly bigger hull, uh, but also a weird asymmetrical one. I don't know, look, it's cool. <laughs> Why not? Uh, so now, I think it's time to pretty much start putting the insides of this thing in, so, uh, why don't we just get on to doing that? Why not? And it's everyone's favorite segment of the video, Human Tetris. Yes, uh, <laughs> I, I still really enjoy Human Tetris. I know a few people don't. I've seen some people in the comments saying it's their least favorite part of the new update. However, I don't know. Something about having to build your tank with the people in mind just ends up with the tanks feeling cooler. Um, 
I think because in real life you kind of have these design imperfections in tanks where they've had to make sacrifices for the ergonomics of the tank and, you know, the people in it. And that makes it a non-perfect tank. The Cromwell would probably have angled armour if it wasn't for people in it. You know, it's those kind of things. And so you, you're forced to make those kind of design, design decisions so long as you're constraining yourself to a certain size or weight or whatever. So... I think it just makes the tanks feel better overall, even though realistically it doesn't make all that much difference. Uh, the crew appear to be performing some kind of satanic ritual, uh, to, to just bless the shells into the breach. Which, I mean, is, is definitely one way of doing it, but, um, I mean, they fit in there, so... <laughs> Why not? And, right, for once... Now we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of ammo placement, but for once, I genuinely believe the internals for this tank are not completely and utterly nonsensical. You can disagree. You can let me know in the comments if you know more about tanks than me. I am by no means an expert. I think this makes a little bit more sense. <laughs> <laughs> than my previous builds maybe have. Uh, I feel like the transmission and the engine layout is a little bit more believable, and uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, y you do as well. <laughs> uh, now, it's just uh, a little bit of tweaking before I call this thing done. Uh, I'm adding a little driver's hatch here because I realised there wasn't really a way for him to get in and out of the tank, so we've just added a little bit of a door on top there. We really need, uh, like, an a, a, a placeable piece that's like a one-way swinging door because we've got the double door crew hatch but sometimes double doors the doors would just not really make sense to be a double door like in this case why would you have a double door it just makes sense to have a single door so i've had to manually make a single door it would just be nice to have you know a, a single door as a just placeable piece it would just save me a little bit of time and hassle every now and then and uh, the stowage on this tank actually for an spg now i think about it is not too bad. You've got a little bit on the uh, other side of the tank, far side from what I'm currently looking at. And then realistically, this would probably be internal stowage, is the little bit extending over the tracks on this side of the tank, uh, which makes the thing asymmetrical, which I know, I know some of you are going to absolutely hate that it's asymmetrical, but I love <laughs> that it's asymmetrical. I don't know what it is about asymmetrical tank designs, but they're just cool. It's just cool when you're not worrying about things looking, you know, your your textbook definition of perfect. <laughs> it's with spaceships as well, you know? Some of my favourite spaceships are the Junkers, which are just made out of bits of other ships haphazardly strapped together. And I think that kind of transfers into what my favourite kind of tanks are. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've unabashedly... <laughs> <laughs> made it asymmetrical and hopefully uh, it doesn't bother you too much because it, it's not changing the uh, the tank's done now <laughs> and i believe that is all of our internal bits and bobs going and this for once might not be now let me know <laughs> let me know if you disagree i don't think this is an awful layout for the transmission and engine but i i i, I could be completely wrong <laughs> So let me know. Um, but yeah, we've got we've got one driver, three guys in the turret. We have no hull machine gunner because this would not be on the front lines. However, uh, we could make a normal tank version of this in the future and uh, probably put a hull machine gunner in there because we have more than enough space for it. Uh, but yeah, this I think should work. <laughs> so if we just spawn it in here... Ah, now one thing I neglected was... Uh, I didn't actually check whether this gun can elevate and depress, and I, I don't think it can. I think it just naturally falls down like this. The turret traverse, though, it's very slow, but I'm not upset by the fact that it's very slow, because it is, after all, a howitzer. <laughs> okay, enough fiddling went on there. <laughs> <laughs> to last quite a while, um, but we have got a finished product, hopefully. So, obviously, the uh, turret traverse is still really, really, really slow, but now it's a little bit quicker to accelerate to its speed. Uh, the actual tank itself, it's quite nippy, all things considered. Uh, we don't have the biggest engine uh, in the world, and yet, because this thing is so light, you can see... We are storming along. We've cracked 40 miles an hour. <laughs> 
this is a seriously quick little tank. Um, not quite as fast as the tank destroyer from last video, but definitely quick. Um, and it's all, I believe, come in. Yep, yeah, 9.74. So this is under 10 tons of tank, uh, which is the limit for this challenge. So it, it's, I think it's legal. We've got a little bit of frontal armor. So here you can see we've got about 50 millimeters on the hull and 40 on the turret, which if we go into the armor view, comes out on the turret to, well, not a lot more than 40 really. Uh, on the hull, it's anywhere between like 90 and 60 at the weakest parts. So it's not well protected, um, but it's also not completely tragic. And I swear I made this thicker than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I need to upgrade the side and the uh, rear armor, clearly. Okay, that's strange. Uh, I don't need to upgrade the side armor. If you look here, it definitely says 10 millimeters, but when I go to the armor view, it says 9. Uh, I, I legally only need 10 millimeters, so I'm gonna have 10 millimeters. <laughs> Even if it says 9. Uh, however, I have upped the armor a little bit, and now it's 9.93 tons. So we're still legal. We're still <laughs> we're still within the legal range. But more importantly, we have a 120 millimeter gun. Uh, how quick can it really reload? <laughs> and oh, maybe I need to move the gunner's sight. That's that's not great. Okay, that's a little bit better. <laughs> how fast does it reload, and how easy is it to aim? Because it's got very little propellant. It's going to be. That's not a slow reload at all. Uh, where- did that shell just blow up mid-air though? Hang on. What? Why did it blow up so- <laughs> I swear that- Huh. Isn't that strange? Uh, for some reason if you fire below a certain angle, there's a massive plume of smoke. I mean, it looks cool. <laughs> I'm not gonna complain. Um, however- Maybe not the most effective at shooting enemy tanks. Isn't that weird? Huh. Okay, well, uh, weird shell hitting nothing aside. Uh, I think this is quite the uh, swish little tank. What do you think? Are you a fan? Are you not a fan? It is a little bit on the goofy side, I will accept. But I think as a goofy vehicle goes, you know, it was always meant to be goofy. It was never meant to be a, a particularly normal looking vehicle because that's just what these SPGs look like. And oh, my mouse sensitivity in this mode is so low. So what do you think? Do you think this tank looks good? Do you think it looks awful? Do you think it would be accepted into service? Let me know. Uh, I'm interested to see your takes on this tank. I personally really quite like this thing. Uh, I might genuinely be tempted to make a normal version of this. I don't know if I'll make a video out of it. Maybe it's the kind of thing for a stream. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I genuinely, <laughs> I really, really like this one. Um, I don't know if it's just because 0.2 is still new to me, but personally, I, I feel like I've been been just getting better and better with this new update. I'm, I'm super thrilled with this. But yeah, uh, if you enjoyed this one, please leave a like, comment, and or subscribe. Uh, and I will see you in the future for more stuff like this. Uh, but for now, goodbye. And as always, a huge thank you to this channel's patrons, Ambrose, CamGem135, Cody N, Digi Pete, Skavun, Gamasa929, Sad Cat, Jack Not Angry, Just Casual 2671, Last Edge 11, Mildly Vested, Nicholas K, Ro Relaxed Panda, Rolls was Bucken, Ryan Brody, Ryan Brody, Stug3, Terra, The Kinesian Emperor, Worthsickle, and Zite Wolverine. Thank you so much for your support.